All right, on this episode of Bouts Talk and Bouts, happy to be talking to an individual with quite the big victory behind him here, getting that TKO victory over Ivan Redcatch in the sixth round of their contest at this past weekend's Triller Fight Club. I'm talking to Regis Prograce. How are you doing there, man? Imagine you're feeling pretty good after all that. Yeah, I feel good, man. I'm super busy right now, man. Just run, you know, back to normal life. You know, I think um, a lot of people think we... You know, once you once you fight, you just, you know, you go to the beach and chill out. But I'm right back to normal life with the kids and family and bringing my son to soccer practice and all that type of stuff. Yeah, but I'm good. Yeah, they probably have that image in their head of, like, the Rocky kind of, you know, end credits thing at the end. But it's like, oh, I got to go back and raise a family here. Yeah, exactly. Man, I got three kids, you know, three young kids. So it's like, you, you know, go back and, you know, we, we do all that stuff, too. We go on vacation and play around and stuff. But... You know, right now, you know, I got to I got to tend to some, you know, tend to family stuff right now, get some things together. That's what it's all about, man. Definitely the most important thing. But to that point, it seemed like some of your family members were enjoying what was going on there. Like it seemed like your son was pretty happy to get the photo op with Justin Bieber and kind of meet him there. Yeah, man, he fucking he. I mean, bro, he. <laughs> I think I just I think that you know one day I, I I'm so glad that he's experiencing this stuff because one day he's gonna be like damn once once when he's like a grown man he's like bro my daddy was so fucking cool you know he's gonna think like that my daddy did all this and you know he got me justin bieber he got to meet um the the comedian i forgot the dude that was announcing the fight he pete davidson to, um yeah pete davidson um he got to meet the the tiktok girls the the Belio twins um who was jake paul i mean he got to meet a ton of people bro so i mean i'm 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 happy that i could do that for him it's you know it's it's a good thing yeah well i'm glad everybody could you know come out of that happy from the pro grace family there because it seemed like maybe things weren't initially trending in that direction with you just in the sense of it initially seemed like you might have been robbed of that tko ruling how much relief did you have when you finally got the news that that would in fact be ruled a tko I mean, I was happy, bro, because listen, that that was, I mean, if you watched it from home and you wasn't there, I was, I was, I was fucking yelling about that. I was like, bro, I got it. Yeah. Give me my knockout. I was like, give me my knock. I want my knockout. You better give me my knockout. So, and, and you know, so when when he went to the ground, um, I mean, his wife was cursing me out. She like, oh, you fuck you and all this, and they apologize. They nice people. I don't want to get it wrong. Like they bad people. They actually nice. But Ivan and his wife is nice people. So, but at the end, you know, when she was on, when she was in her emotions, she was like, oh, you know, fuck you and this, and you know, I'm arguing with the crowd and all kinds of stuff. It, it was just a lot of chaos going on outside the ring because you know it was it was a very intimate fight. Like everybody was very close. It was kind of like being in the gym. Matter of fact, everybody was real close to the ring, so you can you can really talk to everybody that's right outside the ring. And, and you know, and it was right there. So, um, but I was yelling like, "Man, give me my! Get, I want my knockout!" And so after 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 the fight, we you know everybody had to see the doctor, and then of course I saw the doctor. Then I went, you know, then I went to Peter Khan, you know, to get my check and. Then after that, you know, I told him, I like, bro, I want my knockout. Make sure they give me my knockout. And so, you know, my manager, they worked on it. And I found out the next day, you know, they gave me they gave me the knockout. I found out, I think, Monday they gave me the knockout. Sunday or Monday, one of those days. Yeah, because I was going to ask, like, how long the specific timeline was. Because I imagine there was a level of frustration during the entirety of that period until you, you know, got the closure and had things properly amended there. Yeah, it took a while. I think I think it was Monday, uh, either Sunday late or Monday, something like that. Because I, I remember I was already back in Texas by the time I got the news. Yeah, and you talk about the intimacy of the event and stuff like that. I'm kind of wondering if that like you know played into the performance at all. Like, what was the what were the thoughts being part of? something like that because i mean i've talked to you know certain mma fighters and boxers in those kind of situations and some of them have likened it to sparring just as you have was that kind of a weird dynamic was there a level of comfortability with that like how would you describe the feeling i guess well it was it was it was being it was comfortability just like you said but is that a good thing in boxing i don't know you know but it was it was definitely you know just being comfortable you know just it was it was just like sparring it was just kind of like easy it was very lenient the whole event was very lenient you know like even before like so what what happened was since they had all the musical acts um i had to be i had to be they told me be at the ring arena for six o'clock right and then but then i ended up walking to to go to the ring like 11 45 so i mean i'm almost in i was in the dress room almost six hours 
And just that whole time, it was just real lean. We walking around. Actually, Ivan's wife, she was coming to the dressing room. She was giving us food and coffee and all kinds of stuff, man. It was just a, it was just, it was very lean. It was like I said, it was just like it felt like just kind of just being in a gym. It didn't it didn't really give you the real fight feel, like like it was a real fight because you didn't have that. Um, that crowd with that nervousness and stuff like that. It was just a lean. It was very. It was just a very lean fight. Yeah, and that seemed to be like a common issue that I heard, at least from some of the fighters, just in terms of you know the delay time getting out there and getting to fight and stuff like that. So perhaps something that can be amended for future shows there. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. But to that point, I mean, like going into this fight, it was kind of an interesting one because I think a lot of people thought you were trending towards like going with pbc on a long-term basis like is triller going to be the next step after this are you looking to maybe navigate a multi-fight i don't know i'm a free agent i'm a free agent so you know i can go anywhere i can go anywhere i want to go right now so i'm a free agent right now so for me you know if triller if triller wants to put on you know me with another fight then i'm i'll go with triller but if pbc comes with a better offer then i'll go with pbc so right now i'm i'm still a free agent and i can kind of i can kind of do what i want so of course i'm gonna chase the money i'm gonna chase the biggest fights and i'm gonna chase the most money so We'll, you know, it's, we'll see. I don't know yet. Yeah, for sure. I guess I would, had just been curious if you were trending towards maybe one or the other more so, but I guess you want to explore the options and kind of analyze I things mean, a little I, bit. I, I, like I, I mean, I still wanted to go that whole Al Hammy route. I still want to go PBC and still want to go the whole Al Hammy route. But, you know, like I said, you know, money always talks. And, you know, if Triller wants to put put me on again, um, you know, we'll, I, I'll do that. But like I said, I wanted. The, the the whole reason I got on it, I did this, is because I asked. I was supposed to go. Well, going all right. Going back to my last fight before this, you know, with Ron Herrera dance in San Antonio, that was supposed to be PBC. You know, that was PBC. Yeah. And I was supposed to go Al Heyman, but the deal wasn't done yet for Al Heyman. So Al Heyman allowed me to. You know, he was like, "Yeah, that's cool." I'm not gonna say allowed, but you know, he was like, "Yeah, that's fine. Go ahead and do the you know do the Triller fight." Um, uh, but I'm still I'm still a free agent. I still can you know I still can kind of go and do whatever I want. But for me personally, I wanted to be, I want to go to Al Heyman route. Um, but like I said, now if, if Triller wants to do something, then, you know, we'll see. Is the desire to go the Al Heyman route in, informed at all by maybe making a jump to like 147 pounds? Cause that seems to be a killer stable over there. Or are there different motivating factors for that? I think, I mean, the first thing is, yeah, like probably go to 147 over there. But I'm I'm not going to 47 right now. I want to stay at 40. You know, I'm, for me, I want to stay at 140 right now. So, like I said, man, I don't even know. I, I I really can't even say what I'm gonna do because I mean, I just I really don't even know. Like I mean, you just never know the landscape. How the landscape is gonna play in boxing, you never know what's gonna happen. So, um, I'm just I'm just kind of just taking it day by day and see what's on the table for me. No, I mean, it's cool, man. Definitely an exciting time to be, you know, Rougarou and everything like that. I guess I just only asked that with the backdrop of seeing that tweet you had recently where you're saying it's getting harder and harder to kind of make the weight here. Might have to go to 147, but it seems like you have options in multiple divisions, which is good. Yeah, I got, I got, I got either 140 or 147. I said that because, listen, I need, a, I need a nutritionist now, you know? Like, I mean, I've been kind of doing things the wrong way for a long time, you know? And it's like now I need a nutritionist. I have... You know, I have different coaches, and they 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 kind of they they're they're like divided. You know, they they say one of them say one thing, another one say another thing, and you know, it's just like I need, you know, I need I need nutritional help, and I know I need that. I need nutritional help. I have I have bad um, eating habits, and you know, I need to get that in order. So you know, for me to to stay at one forty, I have to get that in order. I have to work on nutritionist for. Um, I just I got working with, uh, with a nutritionist for like a whole camp instead because I work with perfecting athletes only like three days before the weigh-in, you know, and of course that's not enough time. So um, for me to if I want to stay at one forty, you know, and get another belt at one forty, then I will have to I have to get a nutritionist. I need professional help. Yeah, and do you have preference on that one way or the other? Like, is the desire to, I guess, get back to a point where you're holding, you know, that lightweight gold like you did before? Yeah, I want to be, yeah, I want to be a champion. I definitely want to be a champion again. You know, now, if, if they give me the opportunity at 147, then yeah, I'll, I'll be a champion at 147 also. But it's just like I want to be a two-time champion. I don't know. It's just something in me, something I just want. I want to be a champion again at 140. It's just unfinished business. I feel, it's just like, I feel like I still should be a champion right now, you know, and... 
that's why I want to be a champion again. I still feel like I'm. I still feel like I'm the best at 140 right now, and I want to be a champion again. So that's why you know. That's why I want to. I, I kind of want to sit at 140 until I get another belt, and then you know, once my un, once my unfinished business is is done, then you know, then I can go up. Yeah, so you're eyeballing that maybe, you know, Josh Taylor, Jose Ramirez, title unification pretty closely? Yeah, for sure. But, I mean, both of them are going up, bro. And listen, I, I mean, in all honesty, both of them are with top rank. And I know they're not going to let me fight them. I know that, you know. Sure. So I'm not – I. it's like, yeah, I, I am eyeing both of them. But at the same time, it's just like I, I don't think – I don't think I'm going to get that fight. I don't think I'll get those fights. So – um, for me, a fight that I want is um, an AJ Brown fight. I want to fight AJ Brown. Well, I think stylistically that would you know be an exciting fight for sure, and definitely you know a great matchup there. And it also seems like Gervonta Davis is on the radar a little bit too. So a couple options kicking around. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, he's coming up to one forty two, and um, yeah, I, I think that's a big fight for me. Both of those fights are big fights for me. You know, I think so. Hey, um, I think I'll be saying the 140. Yeah, no doubt, man. And just in touching on the main event here a little bit, like you kind of went into this where you're saying it seemed like Jake Paul was going to end up, you know, embarrassing Ben Askren. And you were talking to some people where they're saying it might be a bad night for MMA just because of, you know, who was kind of out there representing the striking aspect. Like, what were your thoughts on just the main event and how the story of that particular fight unfurled there? I mean, I knew that was gonna happen, bro. I'm not gonna lie. I, I I called it a long time ago. I didn't I didn't think he was gonna knock him out like that in the first round, that bad in the first round. I did, you know, Jake Paul definitely surprised me with that. But I I definitely think I did. I had I I didn't have Ben Askren winning. No way. It was for me. It was no way Ben Askren could beat Jake Paul. I saw his hands. His hands are terrible. His he just you know his he just had he just didn't have, he he wasn't a good striker. So his hands were terrible. And, you know, and Jake Paul, he's younger, he's been working, and his hands look better, and he's bigger and stronger. So, yeah, I, I, for me, I knew that Jake Paul was going to beat him and, and knock him out, but I just, he surprised me by how fast he did it in that first round. Yeah, I get what you mean. A lot of factors at play there, the size, and just the fact that Jake Paul more ardently training in the space and stuff like that. So, yeah, <laughs> makes sense that that prediction would kind of be what it was. I kind of came into it with the same sort of thought, like maybe Paul finishes him in the first couple rounds kind of a thing. But yeah, an interesting sort of spectacle all around. Like definitely wasn't, you know, similar to other fight cards you've been on there and everything. Like what were your thoughts on just some of those aspects? Because it seemed like, you know, there was a party kind of vibe going on, some some weed and some liquor going on a little bit. Like what were your thoughts on the party kind of vibe that the event had overall? Yeah, it was it was very lean, man. I mean, so listen, I think me, if I'm not mistaken, me and Ivan was like the only fighters, the real boxers that was fighting on the card. Yeah, so everybody else, it was just like it was. It was kind of like a party, you know. And I wasn't, I wasn't having it, you know, because for me, I look at stuff. I look at this boxing shit. It's serious to me, you oh, know. Sure, I'm not, yeah. I'm not looking at it. I was in the room the whole time until I had to come out. I was in my room. I'm talking about the whole week. I was there. I was in my room. I was work. I was, you know, not even. I didn't even work out. Matter of fact, so I was just. I was just in my room the whole time and just, like, losing weight, cutting weight, stuff like that in my room. And, you know, walking down when I had to do pictures and videos, that you know, I was doing that type of stuff. But, yeah, bro, it was it was just a, it was just a whole different vibe. Just, it, it was. It was like a party vibe. You know, there was drinking and people were high and smoking. And, um, but it, it wasn't, it wasn't what I was used to, for sure. Like, like, how did that make you feel in the moment? Because, like you said, you're hyper focused and serious on what's going on. Your fight had the most divisional relevance of any fight on the card, for sure, in my estimation. And there's this this kind of partying, jovial thing going on. Like, like, what was that like? Was it hard to keep focus? Was it a little weird? Like, how would you characterize the juxtaposition it was of? A little weird. It wasn't hard to keep focus, you know, because I was focused and stuff like that. It was just like. So when we got to the arena, I, I don't know. I told you earlier, like I had to be there at like six o'clock, yeah. and you know we didn't. I didn't start walking until like eleven forty, eleven thirty-five, eleven forty. So it was just like they had us there in the dressing room in the back, and so we on the TV, we watching the fight, and then we watching concerts, and it was just it was like a party vibe, you know. It was just like it wasn't like a regular boxing. It, it just wasn't regular, you know, for the whole team. It just wasn't like a regular boxing vibe. It was just like everything was kind of like very loose and lean and, you know, like a party vibe. 
did you have any like surreal kind of weird encounters backstage because i mean this event featured like rick flair and robots and like live rap sets and stuff like that any kind of surreal strange backstage interaction at all no i mean i saw all those people you know but i mean for me listen when i'm when i'm it's like when i'm in my zone i'm you know i'm ready i'm not worried about nothing you know like i don't care who walks in you know i saw all those people they was passing my they was passing my dressing room up but, you know but i wasn't i didn't care about them you know i'm worried about fighting at the end of the day that's that was that's what i came here to do you know they came here to you know, a lot of them came to play and party and, you know, be around celebrities and stuff. But for me, I didn't come for that. I came, you know, I came for business. I came for a fight. Now, I did, I could do all that stuff after the fight. But before the fight, no, I wasn't, I wasn't doing that stuff. I just was, you know, I was, I was, I was serious. I was in my zone. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But based on the wording there, did you get up to any of the partying after the fact? Or you kind of have to mostly focus on, you know, being a dad there because your kid's there and stuff like that. Maybe you can't indulge yeah, in that. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I, I didn't get to party you know, like that even in Atlanta. You know, I mean, I just went by. We, we had an air. My wife had an Airbnb with my family. So I went there. We talked about the fight. And by the time I was done fighting, everything was closed. So one of my one of my cousins, he drove from New Orleans and he came. And so he ended up, he tried to go out to the club with like Jake Paul and them after or wherever somebody was going but they end up um I think it was closed or something like that so no I didn't get to party or nothing like that and I wasn't to be honest bro I wasn't even really worried about that you know because my family was that we was in Atlanta and I had my kids there and my wife and I got a little baby and stuff so I wasn't for me I just you know it, it just wasn't that time for me I just it wasn't time to party I came to I came to do my job I did it and then I left yeah, and definitely did it well. I mean, you were putting a pace on your opponent and keeping things rolling. And like we've talked about before, very much the most serious bout on the card, best representation of, you know, where high-level boxing is at nowadays. And it seems like by all reports I'm seeing so far, the pay-per-view, just a massive success. So is there a level of pride in kind of showing like the nuances of the sweet science and I guess being that like relevant representation on this kind of a card? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm glad that, you know, I, I got to represent boxing. You know, I, I, I was the one on the card that really represented real boxing, and I had a shutout, and then it was a little bizarre, but, you know, I, I stopped him and got the knockout, so I, I'm happy with everything. Yeah, it's really cool, man, and I also like the way you carry yourself. Like, I was doing some research, and it was talking about how guys like Muhammad Ali inspire you, not even just the fight efforts, but just through, you know, philanthropy and trying to help out people in the community and stuff like that. So like how much pride do you take in that? Just like using your platform to enact change in that kind of regard. Yeah. I mean, I, like you said, man, I look up to people like Ali, bro. So if I can, if I can be like that, I mean, Ali is the greatest, you know? So I, that's, that's kind of, I just look up to that. So I, I want to, you know, try to be as much as, you know, some like some like somebody like that as I can just, just try to imitate as much as I can. Yeah, no doubt, man. And it seems like you're targeting a July return there. Is that sort of the general idea? Just get back out there in the summer? I wouldn't say July return, but I don't know. I don't have a date. No, I don't I don't have a date or nothing like that. I'm not yeah, I don't I don't I don't have a date when I'm gonna go back. I'm just you know, they, when they when them, when my man just tell me that's when I'll be you know, that's when I start getting ready. Whenever he tell me, look, they they looking for this or they looking for that, that's that's when, you know, I'll I'll see what's up and then I go out there and I start training camp. That's all. But like right now, bro, I'm I'm just I'm chilling, bro, I'm resting. I had a long, hard camp. I had a real, real hard camp. Two months of, you know, just working every day, working out every day and just resting and, you know, three times a day, just long hours, just just doing all that stuff so right now it's just like for me it's like family time it's resting you know i got a lot of stuff to do i got a lot of stuff on my plate like outside of the ring now i got a lot of business stuff to take care of and you know that's kind of what i'm focused on right now and you know hopefully you know i think maybe they'll give me a fight date um you know i i you know they'll they'll let me know what's going on and you know, in the next few weeks or something like that. But right now, I'm just chilling. I'm just relaxing with the family and, you know, take a vacation and stuff like that. I need, I, I have a, a, a long awaited vacation, a, a long deserved vacation too. I need. Yeah, no doubt, man. Just decompressing with the family and just reflecting on the performance too. Definitely a comprehensive performance. Seemed like you managed the space well, and we're kind of pressure cookering him more and more as the fight kept going on there. Yeah, bro. I mean, and that's why I think that he, yeah, I think that's why he, you know, he did what he did because I was coming on to him. Like, I mean, 
that last round, in that sixth round, when I got up, I, I told my coach, I like, bro, I'm about to start walking them down. I'm going to start beating them up. And I started hitting them harder and more and more. And, you know, he, I think that's, he just wanted a way out. That's all. He wanted a way out. Yeah, I think that was, you know, kind of what went down there. I mean, just, yeah, I mean, you really put it on him and everything like that. I'm kind of curious, though, because I usually ask this question with most fighters I've talked to. Like, are there certain genres of music you're partial to training to? Like, are there certain artists or anything like that that you gravitate towards or kind of just whoever grabs the aux cord? I'm a, I'm a hip-hop fan, you know, but I, I mean, I'm New Orleans, so I love bounce music. I'm a hip hop fan, Lil Wayne, you know all that New Orleans stuff, and then one of my one of one of, another artist that's really coming up called Benji Billion, um, and he's he's an upcoming artist. I listen to him a lot while I'm training. So, but yeah, I'm I'm definitely you know I'm, I'm a hip hop fan. Uh, but whatever they put on in the gym, I'm, I'm I'm cool with. It. I'm I ain't got no I ain't, I don't be tripping about the radio and stuff. But most of the time, I listen to hip hop. No, that's tight. So, were there any performances from the Triller Fight Club show there that were catching your interest in that regard? I mean, I like I like uh, most of them. Um, uh, you know, especially like with Snoop and up Snoop and Ice Cube and E Forty. Um, you know, I, I I definitely you know I was paying attention to them. We was in the back. We was all singing the songs and all that type of stuff. So yeah, I, I was watching that. You know, that was that was cool. No, and that's cool to hear, man. And just, yeah, it seemed like an interesting show and cool that you were able to give me a bit of time to talk about it. But I want to be mindful of your time and getting that relaxation in with the family there. So is there anything you want to sort of add as a parting thought as we're wrapping up here, man? Nah, man, I mean, I just thank everybody watching the fight, man. That's the main thing. Just everybody, thank y'all for watching the fight. Um, and hopefully I can be back, you know. And, and, and I, if the fans want to be back in the ring, I think I think most people want to see me and Adrian Broner. And so the fans need to demand it. That's what I'm demanding. Asia Brown to fight next. And, you know, if the fans demand it, it'll make it that much bigger. Exactly. I love the idea of that fight. And just great getting to talk to you, you know, getting to the 26 and 1 point, 22 KOs now. And, yeah, just really appreciate all the time here, Regis. And hopefully we can set up an interview ahead of this Broner fight here. So hopefully you enjoy the rest of your night there, man. Of course, man. Thank you, bro.